Tell me more about the quaint little perversions of your life and time. <laughs> And let's just have a look at that and then see how that plays out. The basic story is that somehow Hurst has met Spooner. They're coming in and they're having more drinks and then two more people arrive who live in the place and who seem to be the people who look after and live with Hurst. There we are. And essentially the play looks at how Spooner coming into this starts to dislocate and wreck the balance. I shan't stay long. I never stay long with others. They do not wish it. <laughs> <laughs> so what Pinter captures terribly well is, is the ability to sort of like have a dialogue like that where there's a sort of ludicrousness, but an everydayness. You know you've heard something like that, so it has a reality about it and therefore also allows for the sort of that lovely surreal flow of consciousness, if you like, that, that happens when people talk and relate. My mother remains, I have to say, a terribly attractive woman in many ways. Her buns are the best. Her <laughs> <laughs> current buns, the best. <laughs> And yes, it's funny, because what is actually brilliant at capturing as well is, is just the kind of, the things that people say that are sort of crazy and nonsensical at one level. I wear a crisp blue shirt at the Ritz. I know him well, the wine waiter, Boris. So that sense of actually being able to write about people's need for intimacy while being unable to ever speak intimately is something that I think his plays capture with something approaching genius. You speak with the weight of experience behind you. And beneath me. <laughs> but this particular play is absolutely chock-a-block, with lines of great beauty as well, like, you know, no man's... Well, just the very phrase, no man's land. You find me in the last lap of the race I had long forgotten to run. Thank you.